Hi folks, we ran into a problem. We needed to turn some quarter inch material on our Hodge ST20Y and we went and looked at the spindle liners that we got with our machine. It did not include a quarter inch spindle liner. The smallest that our kit came with was three eighths of an inch. Worse off, if you didn't buy the spindle liner kit or a bar feeder, you may not even have these and they're fairly expensive, especially to buy one off. And you need them to run material of any sort of length in your machine because this spindle liner tube goes in your lathe right here and it stabilizes the material that exists from there all the way to the front of your chuck face. And if you don't support that material, it's unsafe. It's going to make a lot of noise. And if you don't support it correctly, an imperceptible amount of slop in that material left of the chuck can actually affect your tolerances and consistencies uh, on your cutting side. So what I want to show today is how we used a super inexpensive solution with our 3D printer. Anyone can do this. So we're going to model it up in Fusion and we're going to show the design of how we took, in this case, a three quarter inch liner and we used those 3D printed bushings throughout the tube to choke it down to the diameter we want. Now there's two benefits to this. Number one, we needed a size that we didn't have, but the second benefit is that most of the manufacturers oversize these just to be safe because when you buy raw material, it's not always exactly on size, so they tend to be a little bit big. And remember how I just mentioned we want that material super stable inside it? By 3D printing them, it lets us control the exact fit of that material that we want. Now, yes, you do need to own at least one existing spindle liner to do this, and I don't really recommend making your own, although you could, but the beauty is once you have one, you can then create your own 3D printed bushings to adjust it to any size that you want. And this is way better. We got a quote to get one spindle liner made for the size we needed. It was $500 plus I think $80 to ship it. I'd much rather 3D print it for about 10 bucks in material. In Fusion 360, before we start designing our spindle liner bushing, I want to 3D print a quick test. I made this sketch and each circle is four thousandths of an inch bigger than the next one. That's about 0.1 millimeter. And we all know that 3D printers aren't particularly fast, but this lets us figure out the size we want really quick by printing a single piece that has these different diameters on it. With that done, we can design our bushing. This is the end cap piece that is a light press fit into each end. And the way I love designing round parts like this is a single sketch, and then we use the revolve function in Fusion. The construction line right here is the center axis that this sketch here will revolve around. So in one sketch, I can create the outside diameter of the part. That's the diameter that we grabbed from the test piece that we just 3D printed. And I can create the inside diameter. Here we're turning quarter inch material. So I added five thousandths of clearance, making this 0 0.255, just over 6.3 millimeters for the folks in the rest of the world. And then we added chamfers on all four corners. And having this in one sketch makes it so easy to come back and adjust it if you want. We then revolve that profile around that construction line axis. And it's so cool because in one click with a simple sketch, we've created this shape that looks a lot more complex than it is. I then added some fillets just to get rid of any sharp edges. And the design idea here is I want this outside chamfer to help guide the press fit part into the spindle liner when I start. And I want this chamfer here, just in case the material has any sort of sag into it, it will self-guide itself into the hole. Very similar process to make the longer tubes that are the spacers. The difference is we've got a smaller diameter here, so these actually can float inside the tube, but they won't because we'll end up stacking them next to each other throughout the tube. And it's that simple. So what I love about this design is the first piece right here and the last piece are lightly press fit in there. We could easily push them out if we need to, but otherwise they're not going anywhere. And the rest of the pieces are just floating inside of it. As always folks, hope you found this useful. Card here, check out our video on the other things that we found super useful for 3D printing in a machine shop. Otherwise, take care, see you soon.